considered the top offensive line prospect in the draft. Peter Skaronsky with us on the score, the Parkinson Spiegel Show, Big Ant Heron in on the Circuit Resort and Casino Hotline, Circuit Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, home of the world's largest sportsbook. Peter, thanks so much for the time, man. How you doing? Great, great. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So, I mean, local kid, you uh, you a score fan or are you too young to listen to AM radio? No, no, I am. Me and my dad used to listen to it all the time. All right, perfect. So, yeah. like hearing that? Yeah, well... <laughs> I didn't love used to, if I'm, being, if, I, if I'm being honest. We got podcasts. We got an app. But no, man, so what, what's it like? What, what, what's a day in the life like right now preparing for the draft? Uh, it's, you know, it's pretty intense. I'm um, down here in Dallas training. Um, you know, we're doing two or three workouts a day with lifting and combine training and skill work. Um, so it's a grind for sure. Uh, but, you know, it's just just part of the process and just enjoying, enjoying my way along. So, yeah. Do you, you – so you – combine training like you basically just prep the drills you're going to run there so that you score as well as you can at the combine that's how it works yes to do that a little bit too um one thing i really appreciate about where i'm at is that yeah we do have that combine specific stuff but i'm i'm training with duke manyweather who's a really uh well-regarded line trainer so we're also just preparing to be better linemen too um which is not really something that every facility does in terms of combine training so I feel like I'm getting the best of both worlds in that sense. What's been the the thing you've said, even whether it's your diet or flexibility or anything that, you know, you can maybe have some cursory focus on it when you're playing college football and you're going to class at Northwestern every day. But now that you were just football 24-7 preparing to be a pro, what's something that now you can focus on in this stretch more so than you ever have? I would definitely say diet. Uh, <laughs> I, am not, I was never really the best eater in college, but now it's like, all meals prepared for us, you know, follow everything to a T. Um, so uh, no more McDonald's runs or anything like that. So I've got to stay strict on that. What was your guilty pleasure food in and around Evanston? Uh, one of my favorite spots, actually, in Skokie, actually. It's called Herm's Palace. They have a great grilled cheeseburger, which is a, a, a grilled cheese, a burger, and a grilled cheese. So the grilled cheese of the bond, that was probably my biggest guilty pleasure. That's tough to give up. Man, that's yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> and I love all things where they they take the bread and replace it with something even less healthy, like the McGriddle at McDonald's. Yeah. It's like they turn pancake into right. into a bun. It's genius. Right. Taco Bell, yeah. they turn the uh, Doritos in, into the shell. It's it's incredible. Right. The hallmark of unhealthy eating. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, exactly. So we're talking to Peter Skaronsky here. Uh, all right, so I'm going to ask you the question that everyone's going to ask you when you start doing these team interviews and you go to the combine. Is, in the NFL, is Peter Skaronsky a guard or a tackle? <laughs> uh, yeah, that definitely won't be the, the last time I hear that question. Um, you know, I think I – well, first first and foremost, I'll play anywhere where anyone asks me to play. Um, so if that's guard, that's center, that's tackle, I'll, I'll play it, whatever. You know, I do think that I can play tackle in the NFL. Um, you know, I think I proved that in college with my tape. Um, I don't really care about, you know, the whole arm thing. I think I can overcome that and do just fine. Um, and all the, all the people that I respect in terms of – Opinions on offensive line think the same thing. So I think I can play tackle, but, you know, I'll play wherever wherever people will want me to play. So That's such a weird thing to me. And listen, I mean, if you saw what I looked like, obviously I'm the furthest thing ever from an offensive lineman. But it's like you go through an entire couple of seasons dominating at tackle in the Big Ten, and then they're like, yeah, if his arms were two inches longer, he'd be able to do it at the next level. Like that, that seems ridiculous to me. Does it to you? Yeah, you know, I was I didn't even really know that my arm length was an issue until I kind of heard rumblings about playing at the next level. So I didn't even realize it was a thing. Um, one thing that, you know, Duke, who I train with, he points out, is that no one really seems to have an answer for guys who have long arms who can't play. You know, one really seems to have an explanation for that. Um, I just feel like I have proved that I can play regardless of arm length. So it is what it is. I don't really control the opinion on that, but oh well. And you weren't a guy who you were a well-regarded recruit. I called you game in the, the All-American Bowl in San Antonio years ago. And so, you know, folks knew you were going to get to college and do some good things, but you had to step onto the field as a starter a lot quicker than anticipated. Take us back to that 2020 season where Sean Slater ends up opting out because of COVID, and how quickly did you end up realizing you were going to have to be out there playing Big Ten football every snap? Yeah, it was, it was really a whirlwind that whole season with COVID because everything was so in flux. Um, you know, our season was canceled. Sean opted out. 
So then there was sort of a spot open, and then the season was brought back. We had like 30 days to get ready for the first game. So there was no real time to think like, oh, this is going to be, the, I'm going to start now or whatever. Like it was just like we we're at camp. You run with the first team, learn your stuff, go. And so when the season hit, it was just like, all right, I've got some playing, big time football here. So um, there wasn't really any time to really think about it or get into it. I just sort of had to do it, um, which I'm I'm kind of glad it was that way. I think I would have just overthought it too much if maybe there was too much of a lead up, um, if you know what I mean. But yeah, it was it was an exciting season. I was fortunate to be out there for that. Peter Skaronsky is our guest, uh, Northwestern, Maine South. Uh, top tackle prospect or guard offensive line prospect uh, in this draft. Do you have a relationship with Rashawn Slater? Yeah, yeah. We have a great relationship, actually. Um, he trained with the same guy here for the draft, continues to train with him. Um, and even in college, he was, you know, even though he opted out, we never really spent much time together on campus, but he was always a great resource for me, just over text, um, giving me advice, answering any questions I had. Um, you know, it's kind of cool as a college player to have, an all pro tackle in your back pocket, just to bounce questions off of and stuff. Uh, so he's been a great resource to me and really a great teammate, despite never really playing together. What are some of the things that he would help you out with or that you would ask him? You know, it's anywhere from anything technique wise. I mean, I, I could spend hours talking about this really. Um, you know, there were times where I'd be going up against a great defensive end. Um, I just asked him to take a look at the guy's films to give me some advice or just sending him clips that I thought I needed to work on or bad reps I might have had. So, honestly, it's a huge range of things. Um, but he's been helpful in all facets. When you think about your, your Big Ten career, you've gotten to do it for three seasons, starter in every game. Who's who's one of the great defensive linemen? Who maybe gave you your toughest test throughout your career? Yeah, I think that I think the answer to that has always been pretty easy to me with Aiden Hutchinson. From Michigan, playing him last year. Um, obviously, he's number two overall pick, and he's been playing really, really well at the Lions too. So, I think that you know him just being a player he was was a, was a huge challenge for for me personally. Um, you know, he can really do it all. So that that definitely sticks out as the best player I've gone against. Are you a Bears fan? I am not a Bears fan. Um, this is a little bit controversial. I know being from Chicago, so my grandfather actually played for the Green Bay Packers. So under Lombardi, so I've always been a Packers fan, despite growing up in Chicago. Well, you know, I, I was reading about that. Your grand uh, Bob Skaronski, right? So he he won five championships with the Packers, including Correct. Super Bowl one and two. That's that's a good reason to be yeah. a Packers fan. What, what was your like? Did, did you hear Ice Bowl stories? What was your relationship like with him? We have a great relationship. Yeah, unfortunately, he's passed on. Um, we've been gone for a few years now, but um, you know, yeah, like I'm not some kid who grew up in Chicago and just decided. He didn't like the Bears and rooted for Green Bay. I actually have a very valid reason to root for them. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's just – it's so cool having someone like that in your family, just hearing his stories and stuff like that. Um, you know, he was a pretty quiet guy, so he wasn't always talking about those types of things. But, of course, I was always obsessed with it. Um, so I go back and watch, like, his old films and stuff of the Ice Bowl or, like, the old documentaries about that stuff. Um, just cool and – he never really – I'm trying to think of any good stories he had. I can't think of any off the top of my head. But, yeah, you know, that – you know, the Packers and in general are just a, a big part of my family and who I am. It's just just what happened when I was born, I guess. I was always supposed to be a Packers fan, at least growing up. All right. Well, then, uh, hypothetical time. It is talk radio. You are on the score, Peter Skaronsky. Let's say the Bears trade down and draft you. I mean, how deep do the, does the green and gold run? Or like, will, will the, will the... Oh, yeah. I figured you might ask about that too. You know, like I said, I wasn't some kid who just decided to for Green Bay. It's part of who I am. So like, but you know, I, I, I have a ton of respect for the Bears, you know, obviously growing up being a Packers fan, I wasn't a huge Bears guy, but you know, I've, I've been in this city my whole life. I played football here in college. I know how great of a fan base the Bears have. You know, obviously they've got a great quarterback now. You know, it, it would be a dream to be, to stay home and play in my own city and play for, play for that franchise that it came to that. So, obviously, you know, I'm not going to be some Packers fan, but oh, I won't play for them, obviously. It'd be, it'd be an honor to, you know, play for that franchise, for sure. Uh, I was in West Life doing some work for the, the Big Ten Network, and I just happened to see your dad out the, the night before the game. We were eating at the, the same restaurant, and yeah, I tried to kind of, you know, ask him a few questions, get a sense for the, the game you guys had coming up the next day against Purdue and just get a sense for like how hyped up he was, how hyped up you were. 
getting ready to close the season out. He seemed like a very kind of understated guy. You know, he didn't want to take any of the bait of talking about how amazing a player you are, very team focused. So I'm just wondering, like, how long has has this moment been in your head? Because it wasn't like you came from out of nowhere, but you were a guy who started earlier than anticipated, it seemed comfortable much earlier than anticipated in your career. Now, just three years later, you're kind of off on this this NFL journey. The NFL has been in your family like you're talking about. So have you been expecting this moment for a long time? You know, first of all, it might be an understatement to call my dad understated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he's definitely like that. Um, you know, I think I, I, I'm like that a little bit too. I'm definitely play it by ear, you know. I did not want, you know, I knew a little bit that there was some NFL buzz surrounding my name before the season, but I just didn't want to get ahead of myself. I wanted to focus on this past season and doing the best I could. So I've never really been one to, you know, think ahead of the next thing. I just want to, you know, excel and complete the current tasks that I'm doing. Um, so obviously this is, a, this is the whole process is a dream go through for sure. But, you know, I'm never really one to, to look ahead and be like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be distracted before you know, it happens really. So, yeah, I definitely think that I just sort of play it by ear and let things work out, work out how they will and just work as hard as I can to make that happen. I see. I think this is your Twitter account, White Sox family. So we have some Chicago sports ties. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Packers were the only non-Chicago team I root for um, for obvious reasons. I'm a Sox fan, a Bulls fan, Hawks fan, not a Cubs fan. I'm well of the Sox. <laughs> But, you know, like, I've, I've grown up here my whole life, lived here my whole life. So I'm, I'm a, a Chicago guy, a Chicago sports fan, just, you know, with the Packers thrown in there for obvious reasons. Do we have any optimism about the White Sox? It's a fairly pessimistic time, it feels like, after this last season. How how, how are you feeling about them? It was definitely, yeah, definitely a disappointing season. Um, I, it's hard to say. I haven't been following too closely recently. Um, but, you know, I... I feel relatively optimistic since they've kept most of their core together. Um, I feel like they have the guys, you know, to get it done, um, you know, to get back to the playoffs. So hopefully that happens. But I, I, I can't say I'm too educated on them right now, but I am a good fan, a big fan, I'd say. Well, you got other things going on. I saw on your your announcement also that you're, uh, you're planning to get the degree after the draft. How, how close are you? What's that process going to be like? I'm about yeah. It'll be difficult just because the draft and the whole rookie year is so yeah, um, is so overwhelming. But I'm, I'm not too far away. I'm about seven or eight classes away, so that'll take me a year or two at least, I think. But you know, obviously, now my dad like he was big on getting that, um, and I am for sure. So definitely want to have a degree from a top ten school too, in addition to an NFL career. So it'll get done for sure. It's definitely a priority. Now, b being a, a White Sox fan, you did get to play a game at Wrigley Field a couple of years ago that I, that I had the pleasure of calling when you guys faced Purdue over at Wrigley a couple of seasons back. Was there anything about that you were able to appreciate, even though you grew up kind of rooting against the Cubs? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't mean to back, bash the Cubs, but I mean, that was so cool <laughs> that they let us do that. Um, actually, a really cool silver lining of that was, so not a Cubs fan, but my grandfather with the Packers actually used to play at Wrigley Field when they played the Bears. So I thought it was really cool that I got to play on a field that he played on in the past. Um, I think somewhere in my house, somewhere, there's an old picture of him coming out of the dugout, which is where the locker room at Brigade Field, and like next to Lombardi or something. It's a really cool picture. So I thought that was really cool just to just to share a field with him in a sense. Um, and, you know, just playing in an MLB stadium, you know, a stadium as historic as, as Wrigley was, was awesome. But that was a really cool game for sure and a really great experience. Well, Peter, congratulations on all your success, man. It's only about to get crazier. Thank you for coming on the show. We hope we can do it again, even though a bunch of the people that are texting the show, cross him off the list, F him, he's a Packer fan. We don't want him anyway. You know, we, we, we'll, as the show, we'll still support you, and the, the smarter members of the audience are still rooting for you, man. And yeah. uh, congratulations figured, on all your success. I figured people might feel that way. Yeah. Hey, no, again, your grandfather played in the damn ice bowl and won five championships with Lombardi. It's a reasonable reason to be a Packers fan. So Yeah, yeah. And I got tons of respect for the Bears and it would be an honor to play for them for sure. So Peter, thanks for coming on the show, man. We'll do it again. Thank you, sir. Of course. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, Peter. It's Peter Skaronsky. I love our texters. <laughs> Guy texted in, he's off the list, Packer fan. Then I was like, Hey, you are a White Sox fan, right? He's like, 
Yeah, I'm diehard White Sox fan. The guy, same guy texted me. He's back on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Love that Very guy. Fickle. Yeah, Very yeah, fickle. No, the, the, yeah. Mob, the mob is fickle. Absolutely. Uh, Park, how are we doing on the clock? That's what I thought. Parkinson's <laughs> people, they inherit in on the score. 